and you can see, if, uh, for those of you not familiar, the Clovis Point has a very distinct flute down them that makes them look quite a bit different from most other points, not all, but it is a distinctive type of manufacture. Uh, this is a picture of actual excavation at Blackwater where the impact layer that we find is right where they're working and where all of these points came from. When the points are found, the impact layer is invariably mixed in with them or above them, and these points are never found above it, and the mammoth bones and all the points are, or the parts of the mammoth are never found above it either. So it, it, while it may be coincidental, it seems awfully coincidental that the mammoths disappeared at exactly the same time we find this impact evidence. Now this shows some of what we found at Blackwater. And uh, this is what we call the, the black mat. This is a fairly distinctive layer that's at many sites. And it's, uh, when it's there, it's, it's invariably above the impact layer. So right at the bottom where the tip of that arrow is, is where we find the pictures that you saw, the microspherols, the iridium, the fullerenes, the helium-3, excess helium-3, all the markers uh, that we, we find, and there are 11 of them, we find right at that point. Not all sites have all of them, but all sites have some of them. In fact, we've never found a site yet that did not have some of these markers. We've looked across parts of two continents. Okay, this shows that uh, the magnetic grains and the magnetic spherules have a very distinctive peak right in this area where all the Clovis points were found. And by the way, the Clovis occupation was just a thin part of this layer. They were not in the continent down here as far as we can tell and they were gone, their, their technology was gone up here, so they were only available, uh, uh, or that is their points are only found where these peaks are. We also found at this site uh, uh, excess iridium above background and a form of glass-like carbon. Now we've looked at 26 sites altogether uh, currently, and this is a bar graph of what we found. Uh, of the magnetic spherules, you can see it varies. We've we've uh, currently studied 15 sites for magnetic spherules. That is, we've looked. We haven't looked at all of the sites, so it's well above 80 percent of the sites have magnetic spherules. All of the sites have magnetic grains. Iridiums at the majority. As we go down the list, carbon spherules, the vast majority of the sites. Glass-like carbon currently is at all of the sites. And uh, the other new discovery is we found nanodiamonds at three of the four sites, and they are in this carbon-like product. So we don't know how widespread they are. We only know now that there are three of the four sites, but uh, we're finding them just about everywhere we look. The fullerenes have been found at all four of the sites, and Luann will talk about that further. But uh, everywhere we look for fullerenes and excess helium-3, it's been there. Collectively, charcoal, soot, and paws, which are a, a, a particular form of carbon product that indicates uh, intense fires. We found those at 22 of the 24 sites. So you can see all in all that, uh, that at 75 plus percent of the sites, we find uh, these markers. Okay, so what caused it? Uh, there's a lot that we don't know. What we do know is there's no smoking hole in the ground, which would be typical of the KT impact. So we're almost certain this was not an asteroid. It wasn't a giant rock. It wasn't a giant nickel iron body that came in because they typically leave big holes. Uh, what this was was probably like uh, Shoemaker-Levy. It was a fragmented comet. And Shoemaker-Levy had 19 major fragments when it, it hit Jupiter. And, and if those fragments had hit Earth, according to NASA calculations, not a one of them would have left a crater. They would have exploded in the atmosphere. All 19 of those, would, if they had hit Earth, would have been a succession of 19 massive explosions in the atmosphere. And um, while they would have been devastating, there would have been no holes in the ground from any of them. So here we have an animation that's from National Geographic that shows what it may have been like. This shows over northeast uh, or southeast Asia 
an animation of a, of a fireball event 750,000 years ago that we think was somewhat similar to this one. And as you can see, there were six or seven objects that came in with this. That event left no crater either that they've been able to find. And yet you could see it formed a canopy of fire that for all practical purposes would have uh, uh, been a, a fast broil for everything under it in Southeast Asia. And we think a similar thing happened for this event. Uh, now, uh, Jim, uh, can I uh, do the next part, or was Luanne going to do the next part? Well, okay, I, I didn't bring anything with me today. I just want to say that we have uh, been looking at uh, other types of extraterrestrial tracers, and most of you who follow my work know that uh, been looking at uh, fullerenes with uh, extraterrestrial uh, noble gases trapped inside. Uh, the interesting thing about this to me when I first got involved was uh, uh, the fact that there was so much carbon in this layer and it certainly did lead to uh, my thinking that uh, it was certainly worth a shot to try and uh, see if there was any fullerenes and in particular also try to advance some of the, uh, the earlier evidence which was mainly uh, spherules and certainly unusual carbon, glassy carbon and so forth but also try to couple that with the traditional types of uh, impact uh, tracers that we look to uh, when, we, when we think about trying to say something about an impact event in the geologic record. And that was, uh, of course, uh, the work with the iridium, uh, which I think is, is a real coup because everyone knows that iridium was the uh, quintessential marker for establishing that there was an impact event uh, 65 million years ago. And so that was really a, a, a kind of nice finding uh, of course, uh, we wanted to go in and look at the, uh, the possibility of fullerenes. Uh, there are fullerenes, uh, unquestionably. We do find some variability in the abundances of the gases in the fullerenes. I think it has something to do with the preservation, uh, and I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But clearly, we do have uh, a signature which we believe is part of the actual impact event. It's not something that forms as a, as a function of the impact. It's, it's clearly a direct line of evidence that this was a at least carbon-bearing, uh, uh, whatever it was, whether it was a comet or, or, or some smaller asteroid body, I think is open to uh, some more investigation. And clearly the other thing, of course, is the new results uh, on the nano diamonds. Now, one thing that we've been doing as a group, uh, in my own, my own work, was to start and to establish that we can also see fullerenes. Now, tomorrow I'm going to show you some figures of what fullerenes look like uh, with using a TEM, just like you're going to see some uh, pictures probably of nanodimers. And I think that uh, clearly they're very distinctive and very, uh, uh, you know, things that we can actually differentiate between. And there's nothing like being able to see something. So it really is a, clearly a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, Hopefully, uh, the other thing that I think is very interesting about this event and, and ties very nicely to other events like the KT is soot. Uh, there's, there's no question there were fires. Fires probably were initiated, but also were carried into uh, uh, subsequent changes in the, in the ecosystems that, that clearly affected the animals and, and even the people. And so uh, the fire, the soot, uh, certainly looks very much like a KT event. I think this is the first time Wendy Wolbach and I have uh, collaborated a little bit on this. Uh, she tells me this is the first time that she's seen real good definitive evidence for wildfires associated with an impact event. She's looked at a number of other events just like I had, like the Permian. You don't see fire at the Permian, but clearly we see it here. And uh, it's, it's something that is found, as, as Alan mentioned, across the board. So.